Eyes of Rosme Sinai over here at Dovespot, and I'm going to create what I call the Soundboy Death Ray. This will be a three part tutorial where I'll design a drum rack that's specifically made for sound system torment. Okay, so in this series, we're really going to focus on how to break the DAW, and what Ableton offers is a lot more than what some people are using it for. It's not just a looper, but you can also do a lot of mapping and creating live performance tools. What we're going to create here is an instrument, and we're not going to need too much MIDI in there. We're just going to run a MIDI clip, but all the sounds and all the changes will be happening right here on the APC40. So the point is to get out of the box, away from the screen, on the stage, looking at the audience, or looking at yourself, or in my position, just putting sunglasses on and rolling my eyes behind my head and just getting into it. Also, you'll be hearing a lot of bass, probably more than you're used to. Sorry about that. No, I'm not sorry. Okay, so here we go. I am going to drag in an empty drum rack from my instruments browser. And then I'm going to drop in an operator into C1. So drum rack, uh, you can throw in any of the instruments that are in uh, Ableton Live, as well as third-party instruments, effects, and samples. If you grab a sample, like an audio sample, throw it in there, it'll turn into a simpler, or you could switch it to a sampler. But we're not going to be doing any of that. We're going to stick with operator for this. So the first thing I'm going to do is create the bottom of this drum rack. In other words, the lowest frequencies. So I always work from the low frequencies up to the high frequencies, which is really a tradition in music for a long time, is low to high. In other words, left to right. Pianos, low to high. EQ, low to high. Everything is left to right. So I always start my mixes with low frequencies, work up to the top, because I don't want to have to go back to the low frequencies at the end of the mix, because I want my ears to be fresh, and I have a lot of reasons for that. The same goes with the drum rack, or synthesis especially. So I always start with the low frequencies in synthesis and build up from there, even if the main goal is going to be a high frequency sound. So I dragged in an operator into C1, the first cell, and this is going to be the bottom end, the low end of the uh, Soundboy Death Ray. So the first thing you're going to hear in operator is a sine wave, which is exactly what people hear when people die. He's dead. I'm sorry. Which is great because, you know, sound boy death ray. But it's not going to stay that way. So really what happens is when you give it modulation, it gives it life, and that's very cosmic, I know. Anyway, we'll go over here and go to my operator. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is create a kick drum. When I create a kick drum and operator, I always use the pitch envelope because I base it off of acoustic kick drum. So an acoustic kick drum, you have a pedal and you hit it, and then it hits the skin. And what happens is the, the pitch goes down. It creates a glissando, so it, sometimes it goes up or down. But it's really that that actually creates that thumping, heavy kick drum sound. So I go for the pitch envelope and use the pitch envelope as basically the, the tuning key that you would see on a, a drum head. So I'll turn on the pitch envelope. Also, I want to create a MIDI clip. I actually don't like using keyboards, so I just run a MIDI clip while I'm working. Just create a very basic rhythm. I'm going to make some of the notes a little longer and some of them shorter so that I can tell what's going to happen if the note's long and what's going to happen if it's short. Okay, let's run it and see what happens. I'm going to adjust my pitch envelope around midway, something like that. It's going to hear it go. Next, I'm going to drop the sustain. Okay. Adjust the pitch envelope further. And there we got it. Okay, next, let's look at the amplification of the first oscillator. And I'm going to just extend the release slightly because you'll hear a little pop typically if the notes are too long or if they're running into each other. Okay, so now I'm going to work on the second oscillator. Um, in order to do that, I want to switch the algorithm of the outputs of the different oscillators. So I'm going to select the last one right here. 
And that way they all have their own outputs. And then I'm going to bring up, bring up the volume for the second oscillator, oscillator B, which is, has the exact same parameters as the first oscillator, so it's a sine wave. Now what I would like to do is mess around with this feedback right here, which is a nice little touch that you can add to the sounds. Let's check that out. Sometimes it sounds good, but sometimes it doesn't. Now feedback does not work if it's in this algorithm because these are all tied into each other. So as long as the oscillators have separate outputs, one of the oscillators can feed back into itself. Okay, so what this is going to end up being is the higher frequencies that are going to pile on top of the low ones. And I'm going to assign a knob so that I can do this live, so I can bring high frequencies in or out as, as, as much as I'd like. So let me uh, tweak this a bit. I'm going to change the envelope a bit. Mess with the pitch. It's really important to, when you're doing a sound design, in my opinion, to always slightly change one pitch from the other in very slight increments. It's more natural. All of these synths come in straight up 440 hertz as an A, so it's definitely wise to start changing things. Real, real sounds don't, don't work that way. So I'm going to adjust the fine tuning slightly. And that'll be OK. It probably won't be too audible, but it's just something I have to do. OK, cool. Next thing I'm going to do is turn on the LFO. Adjust that all the way so we can see what's going on. Now to keep the bottom heavy, I'm going to turn off destination A from the first oscillator. That way that one is still heavy. <coughs> and only oscillator B is being affected by the LFO. I'm going to go in here and uh, select high, which is uh, speeds up the frequency range. Actually with operators, it's really cool. It actually adds higher frequencies when you select high. Some synths don't do that, but it, it's uh, boosting up the, the rate a lot and it creates higher frequencies on top of the sounds. Okay, now I'm going to jump back to oscillator B and I'm going to go in here and, and go up to the loop parameter here. This little section here is really cool. I'm going to select beat and as you can see it's on 16th notes on the repeats. And check this out. As long as the note is long enough that it can actually sustain for 16th notes, like so, you're going to hear it repeat on 16th notes. And the reason why I, would, I want to do that, obviously I could just do it this way, but in 16th notes, the reason why I want to do that is because then I can map the repeats and be able to change rhythms and create polyrhythms all with a knob on this here uh, thing called the APC40 or any other controller that you can find. There's a lot of controllers out there, just so you know. Okay. Let me fix this. Check that out. So those repeats are going to change with a knob, so check it out. Eight. Okay, so that takes care of the uh, first part of the Soundboy Death Ray. So we got the sound, we got the low end, we got the kick drum going. Next we're going to start mapping different parameters to macros. That way I can perform it live on the stage and, and really have it just kind of constantly changing whenever I'd like. Uh, much like a, an old school analog synthesizer would, would work. For more information about our courses, go to dubspot.com. Peace. Welcome to DubSpot. We believe in providing you hands-on experience right away. 
Whether you're completely new to music and want to turn the sounds in your head into a musical reality, or you're an experienced artist looking to refine your skills and add new tools to your arsenal, we're ready to meet you at your level. For students of all ages, all levels, and all styles of music, DubSpot is here to help you achieve your goals. With course offerings both online wherever you are and at our school in the heart of New York City, we are ready to guide you through the next phase of your musical transformation. Whether you want to produce music, DJ, or do both, you've come to the right place. Come explore DubSpot for yourself. Become a part of our community and make music.